Yeah. Last Let's see. time we uh we got the two tickets. We left uh Hawkman's house as he was uh going to call the police. Mm -hmm. uh, as we were headed towards the Oracle. Uh, yeah, you're going back in. I believe you guys last we did get, week uh, uh, directions, so we do know where it is. Uh huh. Uh, Voigt Vineyard was destroyed, or at least his most valuable crop was destroyed by uh, Dwarfadil. Well done. No, no, it was by Vandals, uh, unnamed Vandals. <laughs> yeah, unnamed Vandals. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, at the same time. Lots of people saw you come back into the city. Uh, and I think you left Hawkman in a pretty big panic. Yeah. Uh, he, he sort of expected a little bit more subtlety out of you guys. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And he said he was going to be uh, alerting the authorities. So we may want to get to this library sooner than later. Well, that was the thing. I think we were making a, a pretty hasty beeline yeah. towards it. Okay. Okay. A, a good a good hasty beeline. It's uh Yeah, no no stopping and perusing. Yeah. I mean unless you unless you feel confident. Uh I'll say that you guys are you know I'll say that you guys are power walking out along the road outside of Hawkman's estate leaving it. Um and you guys are going, ooh, uh Mm. Uh, we better go to the oracles we better go to the oracles and you're like vendrick i imagine you're like pointing on the map and yeah. uh sort of going hey, come along come on come along folks we shouldn't uh, tally we, uh i would like you guys to roll a perception check please Receive. I am so unperceptive in this town. Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. Ul and Dragul know everything. Uh, as you guys are moving along, you guys are passing uh, some, you know, you guys are passing some familiar um, streets. You've been, uh, you've, you, at this point, you guys are starting to know this town pretty well. Um, head on a swivel, Ul, as always. Literally. Literally. <laughs> Uh, you see, you notice that there's some, uh, like, the guards aren't lazily leaning on their spears. And, uh, you know, you're not seeing tons of guards, but whenever you do see one, uh, they're sort of alert looking around, and um, some are moving to and fro. Uh, some pass you, and uh, it looks like they're going actually in the opposite direction that you are. Uh, so weirdly towards to Hawkman's estate. <laughs> uh, you see uh, some salutes, some some snappy heel clicks. Uh, you know, as as uh, you know, high ranking guards pass. Me? Do you uh, do you do you try to appear? Do you just do you do nothing, or do you try to appear? Um, as innocent as possible. Bull has no idea why they would possibly be going anywhere. I'll say, like, in terms of of the group as a whole, I imagine it's one of those things where we're, we're more prioritizing speed than subtlety because Horus <laughs> is on a giant rhino. Yeah. You know, as you... Uh... Which we have established is a rare thing to see around here. Yes, not many people know about, you know, not many people see rhinos around here. As you guys sort of like get a little bit farther along, uh, you know, you're passing by Orderly's Pub, you see the street that'll send you off to the to the Grand Bazaar if you go a little bit farther north. Uh, the party gets slowed down a little bit. There are children playing in the street. Um, uh, Brett, how would you uh, like to move them along? Or or not. Maybe you just drive forward. Mm. That Horus charged through with his rhino. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, Brad. 
I think he said BRB. Oh, okay, yeah. my bad. He okay, fine. Yes. Is he just asleep at the Rhino? Uh, um, He's asleep at the Rhino. So, so DM. Yes, sir. Uh, as the party moves towards this gaggle of children, what are they doing? They're playing in the middle of the street. They are. They're chasing balls. Play. You know, they're throwing a ball back and forth. <laughs> And it's like a lot of them so to the point where it's it's you, it's a small handful of, uh, you know, street rats, as we say. Bird. Hardly be missed if the rhino ran over them. It's just morally. What would you guys like to do? <laughs> Run them over. I want to uh, save the kids. Bender is watching Ool's hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ool is just like I looking around. I imagine Ool as a... As a... <laughs> As a ranger, he's kind of up front, and he'll move in front of the rhino towards the kids, and his his eyes will glow a brilliant red, and his voice will boom. Move, ragamuffins! <laughs> Retreat okay. to your homes. Your uh, your voice booms <laughs> and reverberates. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, Tootsie will will fly overhead, uh, just kind of uh, throwing a little ice around with her breath. The um, kids uh, scream. I guess I guess the shutters around the sh the shutters around if they're unlocked will slam open and close. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, your voice reverberates down ev down the street and through every alley, and the the shutters open and close. The kids run away screaming. You've you've absolutely succeeded at saving them from uh, being trampled uh, by Horace's rhino. Um, I would say every single adult in the area looks at you. Heads pop out of the every window. Um, it's totally quiet, and everyone's just looking at you guys. Come and then on. people go back to their business as you guys start to to move forward. You go ahead and over to the. Is it? Go ahead. Uh, no, I was not, I was going to say something, and then I'm like, wait, we'll forget everything. Never mind. Well, I imagine we continue onward then. Oh, yeah. You guys continue on. You pass a very beautiful uh, cobblestone bridge. Um, but, yeah, you, this is a place that you haven't really been before. Uh, and you guys are moving up towards the uh, moving, you know, closer and closer to the Oracle. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Closer and closer to the library. Um, and, you know, some time passes and you actually make it to the library. It's uh, a huge uh, cobblestone uh, road that leads up to this magnificently huge building, uh, vaults and uh, gargoyles and stained glass on the outside. Um, there's stairs that lead up to a huge double door. Um, and, you know, I would say that you're probably about 50 yards from the from the door mm -hmm. uh, and as you do that you hear uh, chief peter bradley about 50 to 100 yards behind you going uh, mm, uh excuse me and you turn around and chief peter bradley is there with uh he has a guard or two behind him and he's his 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 hand is raised with a finger up in the air and he's sort of hailing you guys and uh, he goes, uh, st uh, <clears throat> uh, stop in the name of the law. And he sort of blows <laughs> on his whistle. Bedrick looks down and yeah. just goes, it's the, oh, fuck. it's the fuzz. Just kill him. Oh my God. <laughs> That's how illegal. Old, dude. Wait, are we how, right? Oracle's library. How? How close are we to the Oracle door again? You guys are about 50 yards away from the door. 
and uh, Chief Peter Bradley's about 75 yards behind you. He looks defeated, Fedrick, as he looks down. And he takes a deep breath. And he turns to Ool. And he gives him a look. I just understand. Nods. I gotcha. As he summons his giant monkey. <laughs> Oh God! Are you summoning a giant monkey right now? Uh, let me... Was that the nod? Yes. Oh God! What is that? Was That's that an insight? Yeah. Oh! Yeah, he was telling me to summon my friend. All right. <laughs> Ooh, you touch the ground, mm. and a giant demon monkey. Whoa, pulls up out of the ground and uh, God, I it stomps on the ground here. and goes Master I await your command We're killing him right? As he looks at Mench He can do whatever he wants We need to make ourselves to the library Go have fun with those guys Yes, master. And uh, the monkey, the giant Balgura, starts stomping his way towards Chief Peter, Peter, and his two guards. And uh, you know, Chief Peter is uh, his his pointer fingers up in the air. Uh, he just got done shouting for you guys to stop in the name of the law. Uh, he's very surprised at this brazen uh, disregard for the law's uh, ban on magic in this town. Uh, but he's probably maybe a little more worried about the giant oh, monkey coming towards him. On, he's a little... Guys, sorry, uh, I was from the baby okay. way. What, what are you guys doing? You're ruining things. <laughs> You're getting me in trouble. <laughs> hey, we kept you from trouble. stopping on children with your freaking rhino, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, well, they should get out of the way. They, well, well, they we did. Summoned, <laughs> we've summoned a demon. I was told. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Right. I didn't mean to totally. Oh no, it. no, totally cool. Yeah, like Ool. Uh, Tell me if you're getting in trouble. They are. Well, Venric. <laughs> Venric, I'm gonna say, once he sees this scenario happen, he is running towards the library. <laughs> Chief Full is uh, sprint. Chief is blowing his whistle uh, like mad. <laughs> He's really nice once he gets to know him. As Ool chases after Venric. All right, the gang is running up the steps to the Oracle's library. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Bulgura rushes uh, towards Peter, and uh, Peter and his his two compadres are are, are running away, uh, furiously blowing their whistles, and they sort of just like <laughs> disappear into the city. Uh, it's the monkey's following them into the city. <laughs> oh yeah, the monkey's following. Definitely gonna cause some property damage. Yeah. Hopefully those kids don't go back into the street. Well, you you and, did tell them to go home. Yeah. Kids are known for <laughs> It was for their own safety. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, I'm beginning to understand as to why they don't like outsiders. We're outsiders? Yes. Well, Obviously, I didn't know. are we from on this town? I don't know. We could have been on vacation somewhere. Okay. Okay. All right, give me one moment. I need to, uh, <laughs> I need to do a thing. All right. You guys are running up the stairs, huffing and puffing. Uh, you hear some, some uh, ex sounds like explosions uh, deeper in the city. <laughs> uh, I, let's see. Uh, Vendrick, you hold the, you pull the double doors open, and you usher the rest of your party to walk deeper into the uh, into the library. Uh, as you turn back, you kind of 
see, uh, you know, you kind of get a glimpse of this monkey demon uh, <laughs> smashing uh, some a really nice cobblestone bridge you guys just came across. It's very, you know, artfully disappointing. Um, yeah. You also notice again the uh, the cloud is basically right at the edge of the city. Sorry. And you walk on in, and the doors shut behind you. Uh, do they shut before I get there? No, you get in there. All right. And it's, I could ram and it's them. you at the counter. Nate. Let's not go crazy <laughs> with the ramming. Let's not go crazy with the ramming. Yeah. <laughs> there be some of the giant monkey. <laughs> You uh, listen. I didn't know what you were gonna do, but that was the best choice. That was hilarious. <laughs> so you walk into the library. It's extremely ornately decorated. There's a man with red glasses, and he's sitting behind a desk. And he looks at you guys, and he says, "He's like, welcome." My name is Clayton, personal assistant to the Oracle. We've been expecting you. May I have your tickets, please? Uh, yes. Digs them out and he, he hands them both the tickets uh, cautiously. Sure. He takes them from you and uh, he gives them an extreme uh, look. He's looking very closely at it, and it takes him a moment. Uh, just, he looks over at you, and he goes, can't be too careful. And uh, this is what old Clayton looks like. Um, Clayton, he goes, well, just as I knew, there'd be no problems. And he puts the ticket in his pocket and he goes I suppose you guys would like to uh, have some questions answered oh hang on man I I got another ticket you do yeah and he he looks over his glasses at you dwarf bill there's also and, three uh, dwarf there's also on. three fucking dwarf <laughs> here oh I can't I can't see any of them for some reason I don't I know why divide, man I'm gonna no. delete all Hold on. So let me, let me refresh my my internet's a bit fucky. Um, uh, what is your rhinoceros policy? No, no, no. Hang on, man. Hang on, man. Don't, don't. It, careful, man. You gotta like not ask him stupid questions by accident, man. I know how these tricks work. No, he's just he's the help. Oh, well. Uh, I am personal assistant and bodyguard of the Oracle. Uh, yeah, but I suppose you could call it the help i am the help yes you're helpful i am helpful yeah where <clears> should <throat> i put my rhinoceros um just right over there is fine it, we, we have a strict no rhinoceros policy inside of the library i mean i, I suppose mean, you could ride it but uh, it would be difficult for you to go upstairs yeah rhinos are not good in libraries generally speaking mm-hmm Anyway, I feel like you had a more important plot point you were trying to cover, Dorfidel. Oh, yeah. I mean, I got an extra ticket for you, man. And Dorfidel reaches into his pocket and grabs out a mushroom. Uh, Clayton is actually a little... He's, he's pretty surprised. Uh, he goes, this is a... This is not a ticket. Yeah, it is, man. Get it. A ticket... For what? Exactly. It's a ticket to another world, man. Oh, of course. It'll send you places, man. Here, here, just eat it. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll eat this later. And he takes it from you and he puts it in his pocket. Ah, cool, man. We get three questions now. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> believe me, you only get two. Uh, but no worries. Usually one is even enough. Uh, follow me. And he comes over here to these extremely well-crafted wooden doors. Everything here is is very uh, ornate. It looks 
ornate, very well made, uh, beautiful. And so let me reveal. Data, I thought you were going to say that the mushroom is called a dip. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's this rare mushroom called a ticket. All right. So. Oh. Can you see better? Yeah. Okay. Clayton opens the door and he leads you guys in. Um, it's a library, but it's unlike any library you've ever seen. There's a. Uh, beautiful mosaics on the ground and, and everything's so nice like even it's it's covered up by rugs there's multiple stories um tons of bookcases and busts and just extremely well lit uh you feel like there's a lot of knowledge here aya um clayton leads you down the the hallway and it's obvious that he's leading you to some stairs at the end. Uh, you look up, and there's even a second story here. Uh, a balcony wraps around the edges of the library. Uh, light filters in through stained glass. I mean, it is truly something special. Uh, oops. And yeah, Clayton leads you to the stairs. You all walk up and follow him. And... Do not touch anything, Tootsie. As, what does Tootsie say our, about that? Yeah. Or up there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> does she see... Does she see anything particularly smelly? Hmm. Well... I think, <laughs> I think she'd Books be just smell fine. good. <laughs> books smell good actually i mean the oracle and clayton do live here so there are uh she would she would definitely smell a smell coming from here or maybe the pantry uh but you know does it smell like beans there could be a, there's certainly some beans in there actually oh yeah um is this library empty also it's empty with the exception of a woman show this to you you see her right over here this woman appears to be uh smoking a hand rolled cigarette and drinking a cup of coffee oh, and like a, uh, a lunch area like it yeah there's a sitting area and uh clayton leads you over here and he motions to her and he goes I will be just downstairs. And so Clayton goes back downstairs. As, as we were walking like through the library and up the stairs, was there mm -hmm. like any, was there like any kind of plaque or like a paper or a book maybe or something that had like the name of the place or just, it was just like a small little token that looked like it, it, it definitely belonged to this library. Hmm. You mean like a library card? Any, yeah, I mean that would be perfect. Uh, you could have you could have grabbed one on uh, Clayton's desk right up at the beginning. There, I'm sure there was yeah, there'd be a like a a little tray with some cards. Come again. Actually, yes, I I will have pocketed one. Okay. Um, like as we were coming in. Um. All right, sounds good. The Oracle blows a huge cloud and she looks up and sees all of you guys and goes was the monkey really necessary actually don't tell me I know it wasn't ah oh no I believe it was uh, in the name of expedience mm. mm hmm well uh, nothing can be done now. Can't be helped. Come on, come on. I, you know, have a seat, and we'll talk. Clayton says you have some questions for me, and, well, 
that doesn't take me knowing the future. Everyone who comes in here has questions for me. I assume I'll you sit, all... We gotta be I'll careful, I'll sit next guys. door. Okay. We gotta be careful, guys. We only had two tickets. We gotta be careful what questions we ask. She looks over at you, Horace, and goes, don't be nervous. Um, she, you know, as you guys kind of gather around, uh, she looks at you guys and she goes, <laughs> she actually looks over at uh, Dwarfadil and goes, I know what you're thinking. Coffee and cigarettes? Oh, even those of us with divine power appreciate the machinations of mortals sometimes. And she takes another big old drag, <sighs> blows it, and then sips her coffee. She's like, "Can I offer you any? Can I offer any of you a cup?" Yeah, I'll take one, dude. I'll take a I'll, cup. I'll take one as well. All right. Hey man, or, is this is this fair trade coffee? You didn't like enslave any undead to like pick the coffee beans, did you? Oh, undead? No. Ah, oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. I would, I would like to uh, smell the coffee and do a sort of, uh, I guess it would be, per is it perception to try and like see what kind of coffee this is or if there's anything off about it? Uh, you look at it and it, do it doesn't seem off from looking at it, but you'd probably have to taste it to really understand. I'll take a little sippy sip. Okay, roll a perception check. It tastes like totally normal black coffee to you. Mm. I like my coffee like I like my women. She looks at you and she goes she strong, goes strong and black. Yeah, she goes I'm not surprised. Uh, and uh, yeah, so she's just kind of sitting there looking at you guys. If and... if you if you would allow, Miss Oracle, mm -hmm. um, I have an ability that allows me to also perceive what you are perceiving. If I could hold your hand. Oh, I mean. Sure, but okay. I can promise you, you won't like it. I have seen many things that I do not like. I... She chuckles. Thank you. Yeah, she as, chuckles. As I will post this, I have gotten her explicit permission, and I made certain not to ask a question to do it, so... <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, yeah, she goes... She, you, just be aware may not like what you see. And so she finishes her cup and ashes her cigarette in the ashtray. And she goes, she clears her throat and leans back and goes, <clears throat> well, what was it that you were here to ask me? She pulls out another, she starts rolling another cig. Uh -huh. I guess I should ask the question, yeah? Which one? I, uh, I am not taking the lead on this one. Should I do the one that... The, the one I had thought of before, which is what is the best question to ask to gain the most benefits for all of us and our goals? Or should really I quick, just... you guys decide. I will be right back. Okay. okay. Or should so, I ask the other one? Well, we have... That's the oh, other we have one, two dude. questions. Yeah, we got two questions. One of them has to be Miard related, right? Yeah. How do they yeah, light the lights on the is. Lander shield? shield? They can't so use magic. <laughs> How are they going to beat a monkey if they can't use magic? Yeah. I think you should totally so like. Question's not the one though. Ask the one about how to save Miard, dude, and then if we need to use the second one to save Miard, we can do that, or we can inquire about well, that devil demon thing that Aya saw before, or or time travel. Time travel? 
so I can ask either the first one, which the whole premise of it is to use both of our questions, right? Yeah, dude. Like, my concern with that first question is that it's that waste. might not be interpreted. That might not be interpreted um, to include Favorably. finding Miard, right? Like, because the what might gain us the most benefit for all of us and our goals is that going to be guaranteed that Miard is our goal? Well, that and and I worry that like it will have the the problem of her saying <laughs> ask the second question. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Just go um, ahead and ask ask like how do we save okay. Mayard, whatever the we'll, particular caveat we'll the word first, of that is. Yeah. We'll do the Mayard one. And then I think we and should continue leaving we'll the, the questioning to Vindrick as to whether it's about time travel or the devil that I saw if we We'll f- we'll we d- free ball the we'll, second one. No, Vindrick will I, free I ball. Honestly, yeah. I think I think the devil one honestly would like would set up for maybe like another session or like more lore about the like the game itself but then again so could the time travel one so now that i think about it all right i think I i'm back put... okay i think i know what question i'm gonna ask yes uh <clears throat> right before you ask a question um clayton comes up the stairs Oops, why can I not grab him? Okay, he comes up the stairs and uh, he peeks over and he sees that you guys are just sort of still talking and not really down to business yet. And he goes, uh, <clears throat> uh, Madam, I shouldn't need to remind you that uh, time is of the essence. And he walks back downstairs. Uh, the Oracle lights up her cigarette and puffs on it, and then she looks back at you, Vendrick, expectantly. Vendrick will take a deep breath, and then he will ask, uh, how might we unveil Miard's whereabouts with the path to his salvation? Hmm. She goes... She looks at you slyly and goes... Well, you could just ask me. And what's your I second did. question? Totally joking. <laughs> she <laughs> laughs a little bit. And uh, you could see that she's actually in a fairly decent mood uh, right wow. now. And then uh, her countenance actually goes back to pretty stoic. And she's thinking. Uh, Mayard's in trouble, as always, but... This time it's different, wouldn't you say? Well, Miard is being held in a mountain fortress called Mount Kazmar, ruled by a deity named Haith, but immediately controlled by one of her generals. It is up until recently a dormant volcano, but now it regularly belches foul smoke as well as a large array of demonic aberrations. You may have noticed after some time of being here, that dark, low-hanging cloud gets closer to the city every day, haven't you? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, it's several hundred miles across the desert to the northeast, um, and he's in one of the inner chambers. At least that's where he's being held. Let's see the other part of your question. How might we unveil his whereabouts with the path to his salvation? Let's see the the path to his salvation. Well, I told you the where, but as to the how to save him, that'll take some more thought. Um, give me give me a moment. And she sort of gathers herself together, and she looks over at Aya. Well, I'm, I'm currently blind and deaf, so I'm seeing whatever she's seeing. Okay. Is... She, uh, out of courtesy, says, I hope you're ready. And then she closes her eyes and then opens them, and they're totally white. 
Everyone else can see that they're totally white. But Aya, you see something totally different. Immediately, your vision just explodes with colors. You see a, a vast, vast moving kaleidoscope of scenes all at the same time. They cover your entire vision uh, and everywhere you turn your head, you just see uh, essentially a kaleidoscope of movie scenes. Um, Aya sees herself in some scenes and she sees every member of the party in other scenes. Uh, some little shards of these scenes, you see your husband. Uh, in other scenes, you see Sigtir. You see instantaneous clips of yourself in the third person. Uh, in some settings that you recognize your home, um, your grove, and, and in other settings, you see totally foreign locations. It's a truly incredible amount of information uh, being forced into your mind. Uh, it's so much that it actually creates physical pain. And uh, I would like you to make a constitution check, please. Does it have to be Constitution? <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> Ten. Okay, you pass. Uh, it really hurts, and you feel yourself wanting to recoil, but uh, you hang on and keep watching. You see multiple quick-moving images of the party interacting with Eden Martoon. In one, she's smiling, and in the other, she's furious. You see a destroyed dwarven city, but you also see a, another shard that shows a pristine underground civilization. You see a demonic spider standing over bodies in a, uh, in a forge. And in other ones, you see, uh, you see a, a circle protecting people from this spider. You see a, you see a mountain and then your mind, you see other scenes, and they all sort of coalesce on this mountain. Uh, you see one scene, you see El Chad actually alone fighting in a vast network of tunnels, and he's totally surrounded. Your, the, the shards move around, and you eventually see and recognize Maillard. He's sitting cross-legged on a boiling in front of a boiling black lake. He opens his eyes, and they're totally gray, just like the oracles, and he looks directly at you. Your vision fades to black as you see yourself falling over right behind him. And then you sort of stop feeling pain, and you come back. The Oracle's eyes have closed and then reopened, and she seems to be her normal self. And she recoils her arm from you, Aya. Oh. <clears throat> she clears her throat and says, Well, looks over at you, kind of makes sure you're okay. She goes, Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news but I searched the future. I looked at every possible variable, and I couldn't find a single one where you survived. It appears that Maillard is beyond mortal help. I see. I'm sure that's not what you wanted to hear from me. I'm, I'm sorry. There is no salvation for him. She thinks a moment. She goes, well, going as you are currently configured is indeed a suicide mission. But I will say, as the Oracle, my knowledge of the future is certain. Well, mostly. There are times when my vision gets cloudy, 
Uh, it mostly happens when the lives of mortals are touched by divine intervention. I, now, I'll say this. My vision gets cloudy when I follow the thread of you leaving this vast dream and meeting one named Pinion and obtaining from him an item called the Imperial Jade Mirror. I can't see beyond that. Clayton comes back up the stairs and he says, we're nearly out of time. And she goes, you folks are a long way from home. Well, you have one more ticket. Did we ask her about this cloud, guys? Either that or the, the devil, dude. One of those two. We could ask how to get home. So, we so we ask how to get to Pinion. Yeah. Pinion. And, uh, Getting home, I imagine it, our med would have maybe given us some means of getting home or out of here. <laughs> Did he? Maybe. No. I, I might have a way of getting us out of here. Might. I'm thinking maybe All right, t tally of the, the group here. Do we want to figure out how to get home or how to find this pinion or? Uh, I don't know, man. I want to figure out why beer gets all bubbly. <laughs> I feel as if you could find that out in a book. The Oracle kind of motions to the books around. <laughs> Well, which one is it, Oracle, man? There's like hundreds of them, man. <laughs> she goes, did you really mean to ask me that? Mm. Well, no, and she kind of laughs. No, dude. Uh, she goes, I... Dwarfadil's surrounded by dead trees. <laughs> well, dude, it sounds um, like we'll find this opinion regardless of whether we know, maybe. Um... Let's ask her what the most heroic, courageous thing we could do in this situation is. <laughs> I think we've already passed that monkey-sized bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I feel as if that answer would be to leave. Given, given dudes that some of us have prior history with with devilish bros, I'm of the All opinion right, that he's the devil or that cloud thing. You know what? Fuck it. Medrick's going to look at her and go, how can my friend Jake return back to the past? <laughs> Fight the ultimate evil, dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting a lot on you, Nate. <laughs> Medrick, bro. Medrick, bro, I appreciate, I appreciate all your help in this matter. I will not forget this moment. <laughs> There's a very pivotal scene. Mm. Well, it's important. Oh, it's right. important that you figure out how to get home. Give me, give me a second to think about this. <laughs> Remember, you can just say, "Keep, keep looking in Talonbriar. You'll find the answer in Talonbriar." <laughs> some shit. Yes. Oh, crap. Okay. Pass the buck back. <clears throat> the Oracle is thinking for a moment and it really it's not the oracle thinking it's 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 nate thinking uh <laughs> she goes one moment please and as you are sort of waiting for this answer a cloud whoosh whooshes over the building and everything goes completely quiet. Uh, you all are still in your same location. Uh, so go ahead and put yourself there when you get a chance. Is it black? Like dark? It's very dark. 
Uh, you is it you magic? look at this. You look at the stained glass windows, and you see that it appears that the cloud has uh, finally overtaken your position and washed over all the land. Is it magical darkness? Um, you can still see. Okay. I would say it's visi- It's magical, low visibility. It's not. Uh, <laughs> it's not dark. Is it? Is it almost as if stuff has become sepia tone, like this kind of like almost the color of this area has muted from being in this cloud? Yes, less so s- sepia and more um, monochromatic. It's everything has been dimmed, and you get a foul feeling. <laughs> that something's not right. And you're like, Clayton was saying, we better speed this thing up. Uh, let's see. Clayton. I got to move. I got, sorry, I switched maps. I got to move him. Sure. Clayton stands right over here. Uh, Oracle stops thinking and she looks back at you. And she goes, so Jacob Kane, the man in the wrong timeline and also in the wrong realm, as it were. Yeah, oh, dude. <clears throat> you tell me this. Why do you want to get back home? Humor me. Well, I was sit hurling through time, dude, when I was fighting a great and ancient evil. And I must return to save the world from said evil. The most heinous evil. Yes. Hmm. Well, then I'll tell you. Uh, this will be your second question. And you have no more after this, but... You guys, or at least you, Jacob, must leave this place this place is about to be in quite the turmoil as you may have guessed and she motions around to the darkness she says jacob i know that your party knows of the man henry bradshaw you've met and you've uh, you've provided some materials to him haven't you unfortunately well, she looks and laughs a little bit. She goes, actually, it's to the benefit of all of you. But no matter, you must go to Henry Bradshaw and convince him to open a portal back to your home world. Once you go through there, Jacob, you should go to Talberine. There's an item there that can send you back into your, to your home. But, let me warn you, it's a one-way trip, and it requires a heavy cost. That is most definitely what's up, dude. Yes. And in that very moment, you hear movement outside. You hear movement? You actually hear it all around the library, all around the library. And in a moment, you hear a big crash. Oops. You hear a, you hear a crash and one of the stained glass windows has been broken. And through it jumps a monster. Oh. He's gray, skin, gray skinned, large fangs and spines. Clayton's immediately there. He rushes up and, well, he rushes up and draws his katana and he strikes it. Hits it, of course, and slays it immediately. 
cuts it in half, bleeding to pieces. He runs back up the stairs, and his voice is very urgent now. He says, we're out of time. We've got to go. And the oracle says, we are out of time. Can we get an extra question if we help you get out of here? <laughs> she looks at you. Dude, there's and no laughs time for chit chat. We got to get we got to book it to Bradshaw's, bro. They start moving. Ah. They start moving and as they do, you hear the doors way down at the south be banged. It, you see you hear loud bangings. You hear glass shattering and breaking. You see where the other you see where Clayton just killed a monster and you see another uh, you see another one jump through the window gosh why won't this let me do this I think we should bail guys she All goes right. on the move can, I'm not sure I, and where the hell is the wool dudes can I ask something before Hang on, combat, hang on one second. Let me set this stuff up. I will let you ask. Okay. But give me one oh, second. And Nate, you gotta give me the signal when I play the the song. Okay, I'll give I'll give you the signal. All right. I gotta change things to token layer. Oh my God! It's a big monkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not good here. It's multiple big monkeys. All right. Uh, Ool, I'm going to allow you to move if you would like, because, well, you're in the middle of, uh, looks like, the shit. All right, um, I'm still down here, right? Is Ool flying? Yeah, is that... Ool. Uh, or is Ool, Ool flying? Ool. Huh? Well, actually, no, because he was browsing the books. Just that's what I was doing. Everyone's chatting. Oh, so that's I see. Like when we moved over here, I was over there. Uh, when see. the shit started hitting the fan, he'll start pocketing the books that he was there and start flying over here. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. It's a lot of tough. Um, I don't know. <laughs> like Every he'll copy. he'll grab like a good few until these ones start coming in through the bottom. Okay. So um, I don't know how many books you want him to pilfer there. Pilfer, uh, or what no, about. let's say you get, let's say you get three, huh? I'm yeah, going to post three, three, what three. these guys look like in the chat. They're horrifically evil. Uh, immediately, uh -oh. immediately. Misunderstood. Uh, uh, it's Brad. Funny, that middle one does look like a Baragura, except it's like blue. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It does. <laughs> Brad, you immediately recognize these aberrations. Uh, oh. it, it offends your... Uh, My delicate sensibilities? It offends your delicate sensibilities, exactly. Um, Rachel, go Bro. ahead and ask your question. These are aberrant. Okay, so I use the spell dream as the pseudo dream walk thing. If I cast dream within the dreamscape, can I go somewhere that I've seen within the dreamscape and bring everybody with me? Um, no. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to know, so this way, like, if, if that's a thing I've done before, then, like, that would have been a solution, but it's not a thing that I've done before, therefore I cannot do it. I see. Okay. Well, as these creatures start climbing the walls and, and climbing bookcases and, and, and moving forward, uh, you notice that they're all a little bit different. Um, in particular, you see some little ones, uh, vicious and vile. You see a huge hulk, two of them. Uh, you see one guy with a staff. And as you're looking at them, you notice that they're totally silent. And another creature appears in the middle. And you actually look at the floor, and he's sort of phasing up through the floor. 
slowly. And he looks like a hooded man with a mask and uh, tattered robes all around him. And he has, weirdly, some but some tattered dark butterfly wings. And it's the Mothman. It's the Mothman. And it's Mothman. All of a sudden, all of you at the same time hear his voice in your head. And he goes... He doesn't speak, you just hear it. Uh, and he says, allow me to introduce myself. I am the harbinger of your doom. Oracle, I have orders to bring you back with me, dead or alive, and that's what I'm going to do. But you didn't reckon with the, what's our, guys, what's our crew's name? The Plinkerton gang. Miards the Marauders. Plinkertons. Miards Marauders. And I do a like a, a anime pose, and I'm assuming everyone behind me is doing it also. Uh, no, none of us. J do Jake it. is. Of, no, no, J none of you. Jake do this. is like he's got to back up his Yasnik bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're doing like a we're doing like a, a what are those guys? Frieza's buddies. Oh, like Ginyu Squad? Yeah, we're doing, Ginyu Ginyu Force. Force. we're doing Ginyu Squad Force moves. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, he looks at you slowly. You know, sort of like how those uh, the Dark Riders in, uh, in uh, Lord of the Rings do. Just like very ominously. And seeing your anime pose, he goes, I'm confident that my forces can make this capture. I need to go handle the summoner before he summons something uh, annoying. And he phases back into the ground and disappears. And I want all of you to roll initiative, please. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. All right. How do I make this? I might have to. Hang on. Don't roll initiative yet. Hang on. I got to actually. Too late. Okay. Too late. I rolled shitty. I would love to roll again. <laughs> okay. Oh, I kept mine. Uh, I am going to... I kept us all. I gotta all. clear everybody. Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna clear everybody. Remove all turns. And then add yourself back in whatever you're at. And it's okay. Alright, if I get a better one, I'm keeping it. I'm glad <laughs> I didn't get a better one. <laughs> I didn't get a better one either. Oops. There we go. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Gosh, I hate how you have to select it in order to get the initiative, you know? Yeah. My internet seems to be fucked, so... All right. I can't even roll initiative. And... Can I roll it for you? I can roll it for you. Yeah. It's uh, Dorvidil. Or I could just go after a certain person. Yeah, go ahead and roll it if you can. There we go. Ooh, a nice four. All right. Oh, you're a dwarf, though. Oh, oh, there they we go. We see 50 <laughs> initiatives from... <laughs> like I said, my internet's fucked right now. Uh, I don't know how I'm still on Discord. It's all good. Yeah. Well, these things are gnashing their teeth and raring to go at you. And uh, I would say that it's uh, Ool's, I guess, first. Who are you going to blast, Ool? Oh man, who am I gonna? Ool's gonna fly up. Uh, I don't know. Over here. So he's up in the air. He's gonna blast the. Uh, 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 is, can I see this one? Uh, I would say probably not from that location. Oh, is he underneath the. Uh, he's behind a wall. You can't, you can't see him from that distance right now. Oh, okay, that's a wall there. All right, so I'll blast that one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, two blasts from earlier. Uh, 
10 15. Uh, I can't see it. 15? Yeah, it was, yeah, 10 and 15. Okay. Uh, you blast him, and uh, yeah, he um, he dies. Just, just roll the damage. That was function. that the damage? I mean, at least that hits. Let's say. Yeah, sorry. yeah. But Let's it was see what it is. Ten, fifteen was the both rolls, so that's uh, four plus uh, fourteen. Oh, okay, okay. So he's totally alive. He's totally alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he okay. takes yeah fourteen damage from that. All right. Is that turn? No, uh, yeah. Okay. You blast him, <laughs> Horus. All right. Um, well, I'm going to I'm going to move my 20 feet because I'm in my dwarf plate. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to dash. If I dash, can I just go like like in that direction? Is that how the stairs work? Uh, the stairs are over here. Go here, go here, go here. I am okay. puffing and puffing. Sounds good. Uh, and my rhinoceros is going to hear my 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 cry as I go. Mini, to me, <laughs> and and it's going to come running. It's going to come charging through this door. I believe it's run through this corridor. To me, Winnie. Me, Winnie. Yeah, 40, so she can dash also to she now. Um, and she's going to go another 40 feet to get to here. She's going to come charging towards the gorilla. Actually, she's not going to go that far. She's going to stay here. All right. That's her turn. Okay. Well, since that's the case, uh, it, it's their turn. This creature right here moves forward. He looks at you guys. He sees you guys up on the balcony. And let's see. He sees, uh, he knows that the gang's up there. And he looks at a point right here. And he uses his ability called Collapse Distance. He looks directly at this hulking creature. And he teleports it. Uh... See her warp space around one of the creatures it can see within 30 feet of it. The creature makes a wisdom saving throw, but this guy is going to choose to fail the wisdom save. And it's going to teleport him to a space right here, right in front of it. And uh, let's see. Uh, each creature within 10 feet of the target's original space takes, oh, I guess it's with the original space. Ooh, ooh, yeah. he did that, he did that the op, he did that a different way where he wasn't I, gonna do that. I, I was think, a little confused yeah, to the... yeah. Uh, I'll play some different. Let's see, uh, he might, he might. Yeah, he's not going to do that. I apologize. I got to retcon it. I totally, right. well, he I could, totally messed that, it up. That thing could move in a place where it wouldn't hurt any of his buddies, I imagine. Yeah, he's going to, you know what he's going to do? He's going to put it up here. He's going to put it right, he's going to put it right up here uh, anyways. And uh, I think that is going to be uh, his attack. And... Yeah, that's it. Do, uh, do <laughs> that's what he does. Take the damage. Uh, you look. There is an explosive. Uh, th th you know, there is some movement, uh, but you don't see anything happen badly to these guys. Okay. All right, Jacob Kane. Um, in this like sort of darkness or colorlessness uh i'm a human with no low light vision how does that affect my vision for seeing stuff uh it's dim it's dim i don't know how far you could let's just call it dim light i don't know how far you can really see in dim light does that give you disadvantage i'm trying to remember how that works uh, no. I don't know. Do any DMs? Know? No, you can see in dim light. I can see in dim light. Dark light is is when I wouldn't be able yeah. to see. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Well, then Jake's gonna come running forward. He'll take out perfection and start slicing. All right, go ahead and start slicing. 23, that hits. All right. Um, for 15 slashing. And, that, uh, okay. And then I'll use my other hand to, to punch him. And probably miss. All right. And I'll use uh, my... Yes, that misses. My bonus action to punch him again. All right, that certainly hits. For seven. All right. Uh, for the attack with perfection, did that miss? No, perfection hit. It did hit. Uh, it's going to infuse as well, just for a little three extra cold damage. All right. A little extra. That's Samurai Jake's turn. All right. Let's see. First things first, this uh, this uh, gruff guy, he takes a step forward to get close as he can to everybody. And he swings his huge fists around as much as he can, trying to hit everybody around, casting something called Reaping Arms. Uh, he makes a separate slam attack against everybody within 10 feet of him, which uh, I believe is just uh, the three of you. Uh, and each must make a DC 17. And Tootsie, yeah. Uh, oh. Is Tootsie baby. within 10 feet? I guess she is. That's right. All right. This one's going to be for Jacob Kane. This one's going to be for Aya. This one's for uh, Dragul. And this one is for Tootsie. All right. Well, Dragul passed the save, luckily. Uh, Tootsie. But you do take. Oops. Fails the save. All right. Uh, yes. So I assume what's both the, of those what's, hit. What's her damage? Not too, too bad. Uh, for Dragul, you take 15, and Tootsie takes 20. Uh, okay. Jacob, so are you hit? Cabs uh, that, or did you... Uh... Oh, no, it's just being knocked prone. Okay, so Tootsie's knocked prone. Mm -hmm. Jake's and just barely that. not hit. Okay, and what about you, Aya? 17 okay. hit? Um, 17 would hit. Can I use my... So, I would fail the save and fall prone, but can I use my Ward of Shadow to impose disadvantage? As a reaction. Because it is an attack. Uh, or is the I attack, would like, say... automatically hitting because I failed the save? No, no, it doesn't automatically hit. So... Yeah, it doesn't automatically hit you. So if you impose disadvantage... Yes. Well, it's still only going to be a 17 against you, right? It doesn't have, you know, so... Uh, oh, you're going with the double roll. Okay. Um, then, uh, yeah, 17 hits. What's what's the damage? Looks like 18 bludgeoning. Oofy doofy. Okay. Yep. Uh, this one over here... Let's see what he does. He just dashes uh, gets a little bit closer and that's uh, Aya's turn okay so I'm prone you are yes oh, okay. can I get skipped I don't I see you on the issue. turn aura actually yeah, I was going to say I rolled 19 for my okay go ahead and put yourself in there and then we will uh Put you in. Put you in, coach. I don't think I can add it. I have to roll again. Yeah, roll again. Change it to the 19th. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that crit. Look at that. Uh, I'll put you at 19. Yeah. And then resort. Descending. And then we'll just make you go now. It's just good. Yeah. And then I'll go. Sure. Um, okay. Vendrick sees a, a big concern going on around it. <laughs> uh, but I do need to kind of just prep some things, I guess, is, is how I'm going to do it. So I think 
what Vendrick is going to do, he's going to bonus action um, Blade Song. So all right. All things that come along with Blade Songing. And then he's actually going to turn to Horus, uh, who is slowly running down the stairs. <laughs> and he is going to sort of carve a, a rune in the face. air, and, and the rune will appear on Horus uh, as he is now hasted. Oh, oh nice. Hell yeah. hell yeah. Let's give Horus the. Oh, you've got it. Horus the um, fast. Horus the fast. Blade song stuff. And then um, he is going to sort of kip over the table and uh, rush to Aya's defense. And that will be Vendrick's turn. Okay. Dragul? Oh. oh, no, oh sorry. Is... Aya. It's Aya. My bad. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Sweet. This is a channel divinity. Um. I'm going to do this now because I'm kind of like in a pickle here. Remember I lit that lantern. I'm going to snuff it out with my magical energy as I'm going to use a channel divinity as an action. Okay. I'm specifically targeting the hostile creature in front of me because he's the, my, he's the only hostile creature against me in 30 feet. Okay. He must make a con save. A creature who fails is blinded for a number of rounds equal to your cleric level. A Which creature is 10. blind in this way gets a new saving throw at the end of each of his turns to remove the effect. A creature that is not total cover from you is not affected. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so it's a constitution save from the Hulk. Yep. Okay, let's see. Oh, he gets a 17. <laughs> Please tell me I have silvery barbs. I do not have silvery barbs. God damn it. Okay. Does anybody he laughs have silvery at you. barbs? <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. Also, are you still on the ground? I'm still on the fucking ground. <laughs> As half of my movement, I'm going to stand up. Okay. He's baring his fangs at you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too particularly happy about that. As, uh... Let's see. Yeah, I don't really have a buttload of uh, bonus actions, because I... Oh, I didn't cast a spell! Sweet! Actually, I will cast a spell. I will cast, um... Spiritual Weapon. All bonus right. action. Put it where you gotta put it. I'm gonna put it right here. It looks like Droga's axe. As uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this fucker with it. Okay. Because it gets because it gets an attack. Okay. Spiritual sure. weapon. My list of macros. Do I have anything on? I do not. Okay. Spirit weapon. Oh. Okay. Go roll what? that damage. Hell yeah. 18. All right. 18. Is this considered magical damage? Uh, I would assume so. It's a magical weapon. Or it's a okay. force weapon. Because, yeah, it's force damage. All right. Sounds good. I Roger, don't like that kind of thing. It smashes into his skin, and he doesn't even notice. Oh. But you did damage him. Uh, and Dragul, you see this happening. What do you do? Oh, goodness. Um, shit. Dragul doesn't especially want to, but I think he's going to have to. He's going to move in. And go in for the attack. All right. So that is unreliable greatness. Yep. With the broken short sword for it's 28. It's good. It's a hit. It is a hit. Uh, gonna pop a favored foe on him. Four. 
for. Oops. Uh, 12. 17 magical damage. So that's 5 oh. cold. And uh, uh, 12 magical piercing. All right. 17 total? Or what's yes. the total? 17. Okay, because it looks like 27. No, that, that second 10 doesn't exist. Okay. All right, yeah. 17. That's Let me mark this down. Mm. That's my bad with my, my boxes unchecked all up. It's okay. All right. Going again for a second attack. It's another four. Happy day. You hit again. 25. Big hits. 16. Yeah, Dragul is just st stabbing it in its back as it's focused towards Aya. He's grinning at you guys. Tootsie All right. is going to fly overhead. Tootsie is going to fly over him and settle down and start nipping at his heels. Oof. Uh, it's an eight. Oof, that is an eight. All right, is that it? I think that will be Dragul's turn. All right. All these disgusting creatures start ma making a mad dash towards you guys. Uh, they can climb up the walls and they uh they're climbing up towards you guys they're fast yeah All right, I think they can't do anything at this moment. Oh, as you, actually, as you all uh, see them all running at you, you hear shrieks. They're screaming and it's piercing your ears. <clears throat> uh, but ooh, it is your turn. Uh, hold on. Boy, what spells would help? Oh wait, I only got one spell. Little slot left. Weirdly, I think we also skipped Dwarfadil. I, I don't know how Dwarfadil probably found his way off this, <laughs> off the thing. If you yeah, I think uh, it... no, he's on there. He's fifty. Yeah, I'm. I'm on there. I think I was at the bottom, and then you sorted it. I see. I see. Oh, so let's have Dwarfadil go then. Go ahead, Dwarfadil. My bad. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, Dwarfadil is just going to be a I, dick. I apologize. I apologize. Oh, you're, no, let's you're just good. go. I totally forgot Ool's having a turn right now. Oh. Just go right after Ool. My bad. Um, this is like, damn, I was going to have time to think. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do so something, right. Dustin. Uh, you're right. You're right. You're in Ool, battle. Yeah, I mean, Ool is just out of it right now, as per usual. Um, <laughs> um, he, Ool is going to just, you know what? Uh, he's going to blast that guy on the top. All right. You hit him with the first one. Go ahead and roll damage for that. Uh, so that's... Oh, that is including the genius wrap, so that's, uh, yeah, 13. All right. This guy looks pretty fucked. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but no, not he's dead. Pushed back, by the way, he's pushed back, like, 15 feet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Azul's Anything. just flying up in the sky, in the ceiling, as far, uh, as far up as he can, but, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'd say it's about, you know, a standard... It's probably it's probably 
20, 20. Probably the ceiling is probably at max 30 feet. I stay at 30 feet. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right, Dwarfadil. Go All right. ahead. Uh, Dorfadel's going to head over here, and he's going to spike growth. Nice. Spike growth. Yes. Okay. A 20 foot radius centered on a point, and sprouts are going to come up. All right. Basically, he's going to get the south side of this. So that's going to be. I think he can basically just do this. And then that would be. Basically, all of this is going to be. Okay. Like growth. All right. Concentration. Uh, let's see. Creature moves into it. When a creature moves in or within, it takes piercing damage for every five feet it travels. <laughs> uh, yep. Okay. Sounds good. Any well, creature that can't see it at the time must make a perception. Okay. Do they take any immediate damage or no? Um. No. Okay. Yeah, it's into or within. Yeah, it would say this turn, so. No, right. they don't take any damage right now. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Now it's going to be Vendrick, unless you're doing anything else, Dwarfadil. Nope. All right, Vendrick. All right. Uh, Vendrick is currently concentrating on Haze. I think Vendrick is going to start attacking uh, this thing. Okay. Let's see. Is there anything he would rather do? I'm just seeing if there's something I can throw in there if need be. Does not. He looks like he's grinning at all of you. Alright, that's not good. Why is he doing that? Uh, Alright. Vendrick is gonna he's gonna swing his weapon at this guy. Alright. Um, so I got extra attack, so two swings. Both of them hit. Stick to snack. 11 and 14. Woof. 25. 25. Slice you hit him. And dice him. And you slash him. And you, his skin's actually like kind of translucent. Uh, I do have a magic weapon if that's. Uh, yep. Important. Totally understood. His skin's like kind of translucent. Uh, you see it go into him and again, still grinning at you. What do you Bender do? doesn't like that. That's very uncomfortable. You like you clearly heard him. Yeah. Uh, but is that turn? Um, really can't do too much. Uh, Vendrick will look down off the ledge here and see this guy. Uh, this guy here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is going to put his hand out, and a, a burst of wind will will go towards him. Okay. Cool. Just to DC. slow him down a little, maybe. All right, let's see. And this is a strength save? Yes. Uh, you will see save that he PC. is horrifically weak. Uh, <laughs> Knocks him back five feet. All right. He gets knocked back five feet. As we cut over to horror. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say, and that is it. For okay. Oof, the wind blows him back. Weird in the library. Uh, but Horus, you're hasted right. and uh, beefy as fuck. I'm hasty as shit, bro. Yeah, here's I'm gonna hasty run, if you need to know. I'm going to run down the stairs, uh, which I have double movement speed, so I can go all the way to here. All right. Uh, and you can dash get a free, free action. as well if you want to. Yeah. I can, can use another a, 40 feet. I can move another 40 feet, which I will do. Well, I'll move 15 feet to get up to this gentleman. Uh, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna thwack him. I'm gonna hit him with the old war hammer. Okay. Actually, first I'm gonna use my bonus action because I didn't. This is my I get a second action right, so I just that wasn't my bonus. So I'm gonna use 
Uh, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark upon him. Ooh, okay. Uh, so ignore that damage stuff, because that's... that's you just cast it. Yeah, I just cast it. So he is marked. Uh, right, let me mark I'm, him. Yeah, mark that son of a bitch. And now I'm going to... Where's my... Sh where's my where am I? Hit him, maybe, for 11. Uh. You do hit him. Oh, matches man. him. Matches hits. So, yes, you do hit him. <laughs> Heck yeah. And I will bla I do 17 damage All right. to him. It hurts him uh, pretty bad. And then I'll use my extra attack to hit him again. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. All right, Four, you bring the hammer 20. glowing in gold and cave his head in and smite him right in the middle of the library floor. Everybody looks at you. I hold my finger up to my lip, lips and I say, quiet in the library. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did I do that? So I know you're hasted. Can you do anything oh, else? I don't think so because I use my extra action. To you do have dash. some extra movement though, because you only move fifteen. Oh, that's right. So I can move another twenty-five. So I'll do it. I'll come up here. I'll get to this guy just so that I'm kind of in his way. And then I am going to have my rhino run too. Hell yeah! Actually, my rhino rhino's going to run up to here, and then. Nah. Like it, it was like in the waiting room. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do I want to dash? I, you know what? The rhino is going to dash just to kind of make, force this guy. If he wants to get out of here, he's got to, he's got to disengage. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. That is it. All right. This seer also grins a little bit. And he casts an innate ability out of phase movement. You see his countenance sort of shimmer a little bit. And he walks into the space with this rhino. And then he walks out of it. Oops. And that, uh, that rhino takes 1d10 damage. So, Brad, if you wouldn't mind rolling that. Oh, the rhino takes 1d10? All right. Just from moving in here. And then um. he phases into the bookcase. And then you oh. see his body rise up out of the top of the bookcase, and he's standing at the top, giving him a view of everything in this uh, library. And, Vendrick, you see the, the Hulk look over at you and, and grin. Uh, and the seer casts an ability called Psychic Orb on on the uh, seemingly on his own ally, which is 31 psychic damage. And that Hulk <laughs> takes the damage, it gets absorbed inside of him, and then mm -hmm. boom, it gets, ex it explodes the Hulk explodes with psychic energy and hits every single person around him because of his psychic mirror. So everybody Ooh. within yeah. proximity to the Hulk, take 31. And then this guy hey. looks over at uh, Horus and actually, no, he doesn't look at Horus. He looks at Ool blasting people up there and he casts a... He casts a Psychic Orb at Ool for 13, which uh, probably a miss, right, Ool? It's not a spell. It's a, it's simply a, a Psychic attack. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that'll miss. Okay. Um, and the Seer is going to roll his thing to recharge, which it does not. I, I beat my... Uh concentration okay good good <laughs> uh, 
I had to beat uh, a 16 or I had to beat a 15. Exactly right. Are you concentrating as well on something, Dribble? Uh, the, uh, just the favored foe works as if you're concentrating on a spell. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, that's the seer's turn. Dwarfadil, you just saw an explosion. What do you do? Uh, how's everybody looking over there? Pain? Well, Kurt, pain. I have 14 hit points left. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Oh. All right. Uh, that's not going to work. Um, do you have... Mr. Bobbins, do you have access to my character sheet? I do not have access to Dwarfadil. All Let's right. see if can, I can give it... Can you toss a mass cure wounds? I, I, mean, I don't. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oh. give it... Uh, give it to Brad. Okay. Oh, man. Get it. And that is... Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Yeah, give it to him. All right. You should be able... <laughs> you should be able to see it now, Brad and uh, Borderlands. Give it to him. I think I hit most of y'all with a... A mass cure wounds, huh? Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's see. What do we got? What spell level is that? You got so many... Five. Wounds, bro. <laughs> there it is. It's open and everything. All right. 25. Is that 25 for... I think everybody... Two the... up to six creatures. Each target regains hit points equal to 3d8. So we each... Six people get... Um, 25, 25 HP? Hell yeah. In the 30-foot radius sphere, yeah. In the 30-foot radius of Dwarfville. So I don't think I'm actually in the 30-foot radius. No, it's just on a point up to 60 feet away from me. Oh. Uh, yeah, you're right. Well, Jake would like yeah, his so 25. I actually yeah. have all still, so I don't care. So I can put it somewhere, yeah. like, hopefully I can get most. You can hit everybody. I think you can think. hit everybody. You can hit everybody if you can put it in a point wherever you want. Yeah, yeah, I can basically hit everybody. So yes, twenty-five hit points. I'm just appealing. Cool, that's awesome. <laughs> Are you gonna move? Uh, no. Dorfadil doesn't really see a point. All right, he's just chilling. All right, goes back to looking for his why beer is bubbly, the book. <laughs> of course. All right, Jacob Cade, what are you up to? Uh, Jake makes another slash with perfection. All right. That hits. And he hits. Um, I'll go ahead and try to make this a stunning strike as well. Okay. So he's going to make a, a con save. Yeah, con 15. against 15. Uh, yeah, I figured. Ruh, ruh, ruh. And then uh, I use my magical fists to punch him. Miss, and I'll use my punches. Use right my off his arm. Bonus action to punch him again. This time you hit him right in the jaw. For another, For seven. another seven. Hell yeah. That's Jacob King. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, this guy is going to roll to recharge. does not but that's okay Thank he looks uh, he looks at uh, our friends up to the north and he attacks uh, he attacks uh, old shopkeep Lair. yeah old Vendrick old Vendrick for 23 uh, 23 would hit uh, except Vendrick is going to cast you might have heard this one before shield <laughs> <laughs> All right. Classic shield. Clank. Clank. Puts a ward up. No problem at all. Okay, until the start of your next turn, you have plus five bonus. All right. Yep. Well, he's a little bit confused. Uh, and uh, he looks back over at 
uh, Aya and then gives her a slam. Ugh. Which I is assume the, will is, hit you. Is it the regular one? It's a regular slam. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Only 12 damage, though. Only 12? Not the plus yep. 7? Okay. That's correct. Uh, okay. This guy... Let's see. He runs up over here behind uh, Horus, and he also gives you uh, a slam. He's going to go one oh, shit. and then two. Which All I right, assume let's see. Only the 27 is going to Yeah, the 27 hit. hits. The other one was the 16. The 22 yes. is somebody else. Right. Yep. Okay, so it's 27 does hit me. Okay, so he only does 13 damage to you. All right, that's not so bad. I can take a little bit of that. For now. Okay, cool. Aya, what do you do? Bonus action, I'm going to use Spiritual Weapon. Okay. Does 17 hit the Hulk? It does. Okay. It's going to deal 5 force damage. Roger. As an action, I'm going to disengage. Okay, yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> um, my free interact, I'm just gonna yap at the seer real quick. Like, I is there a back entrance for you to escape from? Because Jeez. if so, I don't mind taking your form in order to provide a distraction. She puffs on her cigarette and uh, goes. The only way out is the way we came in. Unless you want to go through a window, I suppose. Well, that's she looks over, enough. <laughs> she looks over at Clayton. She's like, eh. she's like shrugs, like, yeah, I guess. And uh, Dragul. All right. Um, Dragul. Is gonna move back and he's gonna climb this outside wall. I assume as soon as he gets out of there, he uh, takes an attack of opportunity. He would, yeah. Let me just go ahead and do that slam. It's only a twelve. Yeah, twelve is is he ducks it. He, cool. He ducks it as he goes over the wall. And he drops right in front of this guy here. Okay. And he's gonna start taking some attacks. Okay, go ahead and roll them. So first off. Nice. Oh my goodness, getting getting real nice with those. For a 19. Uh, 19 does hit. All right. He's going to burn another favored foe to switch it over to this jerk. As he goes across, um, his, uh, chest with the, with the blade that glows blue with infusion. And how much damage? Does Ignore it do? that seven. That's second seven. Uh, so that's 13. That's 15 damage. Oops. I have to, I have to do something really fast. I'm sorry. Okay. So you had a 17 plus two for the attack. Correct. Uh, no, it is a yes, 17 plus two. Yeah. 17 plus attack. two. Okay. Uh, I need to, something is going to happen that we don't, that we haven't discussed yet. The aura of shrieks. You are within 20 feet of the Gru right here. So attacks against anybody not a Gru have disadvantage. These guys are Gru. So you would actually have a 14 or disadvantage with the broken oh. sword. Okay. So, sorry, I apologize. I just forgot about it until just now, but that would actually be a miss with the broken sword. Attack rolls against creatures other than a Gru, but it is a Gru. No, 
This guy is not a Gru. He's a seer. Okay. These little minions are Gru. Don't get eaten by a Gru. I see. Okay. So that is a miss. That is a miss, yes. All right. I suppose we'll go in for Would another you, one. I, now, do you have to do favored foe after or before you make the attack? Uh, it is my choice. I can do it if it lands. Okay, basically. so if you don't want to use that favored foe because it would have been a miss, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. No, we'll, we'll walk it back because it was a miss. Okay. I don't think I can use it if it misses. So... Um, okay, makes sense. Well, I get an, an, another another go. You get it every um, time. With another... Uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy so far. Um, with okay, disadvantage. That... that is a 23. Okay. So, In I mean, this moment? Does that do it? It, <laughs> it does. Uh, that will be a hit no matter what happens. But this guy is going to use his reaction to bend space. And he is, when he would be hit by an attack, he's going to swap positions with this Gru. So the Gru is there, and now he is standing in these thorns. And yes, this Gru will take the damage that you do with that broken sword. And the guy will okay. take it from the thorns because he entered them. Yeah. He did enter, he did enter into the thorns, yes. And it's Which probably five. Uh, assuming assuming Z can take damage from normal piercing. Two D four for every five feet he travels. Okay, well he teleported in there, so we'll just say oh, okay. it's one. It's just two D. Yeah. Okay. okay, three damage. Roger. Alright. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. Uh Kristoff against this creature. Will do. So that is going to be 16 for that. And then as it's infused, so 19 damage. All right. Uh, yeah, this okay. guy withers and streaks and dies. Wait, I thought, it, I thought it did to this one. Nope. It, uh, it does it to whatever creature he swaps into his place. Oh. Basically, right as you're about to hit okay. him, he swapped places. Yeah. I see. All right. Uh, it's bonus action. Tootsie is going to go and she's going to fly at this guy over the ground. Roger. And uh, take a bite at him at a disadvantage, correct? Uh, yes. Actually, no. So a 19. Uh, you're not within 20 feet of this creature. So it's, no? it is a 27. So that is a critical. Wait. So which creature has the aura? The spiky These head ones. Guys. The spiky head creatures right here with the aura. Oh, I see. Okay. And you killed this All one. All right. So, so just go ahead and roll so damage. Tootsie will, will take a critical damage for, looks like 14. Okay. Unless he swaps again, if he can. Nope. He used his reaction. He can't do that. So yeah, she'll go and just b bite him right on the shoulder. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sounds good. Freezing uh, him slightly. And oh. I, I think that that is Dragul's turn. All right. It's these little creatures' turn. Um, let's see. What do these guys do? This guy is going to take... Well, he's not going to take that damage. He's going to climb up on the wall so that he doesn't take this, this damage. Uh... And he's looking at you, Dwarfadil. And he gets right up next to you. Yeah, so he's going to take... I said he climbed up on the wall, so he's going to take oh, sorry. The, the thorn damage. That was hurt you. Yeah, that's good. Oh, but he well, does do a I confounding think... bite against you. I, I just... Not to split hairs. He will take at least one 2d4 of damage. Okay. Because he, he's moving within it. He did move in it. out of the... Yeah. So, yeah, okay, let's roll that. 
So I have to roll 2d4, which is four damage. All right. That's not a lot, but it's something. It's certainly something. Okay. Did that bite hit you? I doubt it, right? Uh, 13? 13's a tie. Which, which oh, yeah, so it does right. hit, unfortunately. Oh, okay. okay, I will right, take so my take... six piercing. And succeed on a wisdom save, DC 10. Okay. Or all attacks against you have advantage. Until the next turn. Oh. Brad, save me. I can't uh, roll. Oh, what do you need me to roll? Uh, wisdom and a con save. Wisdom. So weird. I don't know what's going on with the internet. Be saved. Uh, and a con? Yep, and a con for the uh, concentration. You, oh, no. you did not, you did not uh, pass your con, I'm afraid. All right. The uh... Not my fault. No, you're, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is down, though. Oh, the... Like this is here. Oh. Leg growth. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, it's two. So you passed. You passed the first. Wisdom. Oh, I understand. My bad. Okay, so the growth is down, but at least you don't have advantage against you on your next turn. Uh, yeah. Dragul, this guy runs up to you, and he gives you. A, he like runs up, uh, right where the guy you just killed, and he gives you a bite, confounding bite actually, but it totally misses. Uh, pretty comically so um and uh of course horace you receive an attempt at a bite as well but it just clanks off your armor he's just, just gnawing at you <laughs> and uh <laughs> Ooh, you're up yeah i'm just gonna blast uh let's see i'll blast at this guy at this guy right here uh, no, I'm going to do it this one. Okay. 18 hits. Yeah, and no, I got to do another blast. Um, yeah, I'll blast this one with my second blast. All right, go ahead and roll damage on the first one. So. Okay, that's enough. That does kill this guy. He yeah. gets blasted to pieces. And you try to blast this other guy, uh, but... It doesn't. You you don't actually hit. Uh, what kind of damage is your? Uh, is it's your, force your and blast? bludgeoning. Force and bludgeoning. bludgeoning. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it is a miss. Um, but you can still do something else if you would like to. Uh. Yeah. There's not a whole lot Ool can do. That's it. All right. Uh, Clayton and the Oracle look over at you, Aya, and they sort of agree uh, they should hide in this back room. So that's what they do. And uh, just sort of bar the door a bit. Uh, Vendrick, go ahead. All right. Vendrick, uh, I completely forgot about doing this last time, but it's okay. He, he like swings his sword to one side, it bursts into flames uh, because what is it? Damn it. It's not plates. It is... Oh, yes, just my extra attack. My extra attack, I can use a cantrip in place of an attack, which I'm just okay. going to use green flame blade. So this green flame comes off my sword. That's going to be this first attack, and then the second attack's a regular one. Okay. Oop. Oop. All right. Well, the first regular. one, the first one hits with the with the power up. All right. Uh, I will put that on so that it comes up. Loop. For sixteen, green flame comes down and slashes this guy on the chest. Yep. Uh, nice. It sparks out, but there's nobody nearby, so it doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, and then the bonus action. Fenric's going to use his thing that wind again after bursting it outward is going to pull inward Ooh. Uh, and is trying to pull this big guy five feet towards it. Towards you. 
Yeah. All right, let's try that. A strength save from the Hulk. Uh, he fails it. He's not that strong, so I guess he does get pulled uh, yeah, a little bit closer to there. you. Okay. It's for, for a reason that might come up later. Might not. We'll see. All right. All right. Sounds good. Uh, but other than that, that is it for Vendry. All right, Horace, you're in the thick of it. Hell yeah, I am. All right, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bonus action. Hmm. Well, I'm going to use my bonus action to move my hunter's mark. But, what do you, well, I don't have time to be asking questions. I'm going to move it to this big monkey. Okay. <laughs> Let me move that over there. He's marked for death. Marked for death. And I'm going to attempt a Warhammer Thwack. Eighteen. All right, I need you to roll that at disadvantage, please. Oh, uh, you are within uh, twenty feet of the Gru, and his oh. arm shrieks is hurting your. You're getting me. All right, let me roll again, and we'll take whichever one's less of these here. Sure. Okay, the eighteen the is 18. going to hit. All right, I am going to. I'm going to do a divine smite. Good. Uh, let me roll the damage on this thing first here. Uh, so, a, a total of 15 with, with, without the Divine Smite. Okay. Uh, but I am going to pump a level 3 Divine Smite on top of that, which is... Which means... Shit, where's my Divine Smite? Okay, so it's uh, 2d8 plus 1d8 plus, plus another. So it's 4d8, and this is a Fiend. Uh, he's an aberration. He is an aberration. Okay, never mind. So it's 48. So I'm going to roll an additional 48 here. Okay. Another cool. 11. So 26 damages, damages. All right. That got his attention, especially since he, uh, he didn't think you would hit him. He looks back at you. It's like, what the hell? I'm not <laughs> and I will hit him again. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, but it's at disadvantage. It's a 12. 12 is probably Yes. He does uh, smack your hammer away. But, but I you am are hasted. So I think <laughs> you get one more attack. I do get one more attack. You can Excellent. swing at the little guy. Be like, motherfucker, and stop annoying the piss out of me. Vendrick's yeah. like yelling from over the balcony. He's <laughs> like, hit the little guy. The little one. Uh, hold on, Horace is going to roll an intelligence check. Oh, All no. right, Horace. Oh, you're Horace, good. Horace flips around, and he does, in fact, swing at the little guy. Uh, for 15. You do hit. All right, and I'm going to pump a level one Divine Smite into this guy. Okay. Just to make sure. Just fuck Just this to... little guy in particular. <laughs> yeah. Holy, holy ash. Wait, I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That's, that, <laughs> yeah, what? added the smite. It added the smite. Damn, you're strong, well, man. Well, yeah, I added the smite, but it, wouldn't, it shouldn't have been 48. It should have been 2d8 on that Divine Smite, so... Just roll uh, 2d8 then. Well, hold on. Let me... Because it, it also it, rolled my divine... Three oh, plus four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. 2d8. All right. So it's in here... It's a 15. It was 7, and 7 is 14, plus 6 is 20 altogether. Okay. Uh... Yeah. His head caves in again. No more, and the shrieking stops. You annoying little shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to the seer. And Tootsie's kind of in the way right now, but uh, he is highly intelligent. And he looks over at the Hulk, and he fires a psychic orb at the Hulk. Boom. 27, which he's just going to let it hit him. 
and he's going to reverberate 25 that, psychic damage. Does that count as like ranged or anything? Like, does he get disadvantage for Tootsie there, or does psychic have something different? I guess it is ranged. It is a ranged attack. Yeah. Um, so it'd be 18. He's, 18 hits though. He's oh, hitting does? him at it. Yeah. It I would hit so, him regardless, no matter I was what. I was hoping but, it wasn't yeah. enough. <laughs> Yeah, this guy. This guy is a. Uh, he knows the drill. He actively allows himself yeah. to be hit by this stuff, so it does reverberate. Uh, that might be good. Uh oh. Uh, Twenty-five damage to everybody around here. Does the psychic weapon also take damage, or the the spiritual weapon? I don't think that it does. I don't. I don't think it has it. <laughs> that was close. Uh, I had to beat a 12, and I matched a 12. Okay, good. Uh, this guy is standing right over here, just to just to make sure that it, you know, that Tootsie, that, that, that nothing happens. He he phases over here, onto the uh, onto the table, and uh, no. again, he fires one more psychic orb at the hole. It's just a magic. It's just oh. a spectral weapon. Oh, oh God. 50 damage from this dick. I'm sorry, guys. I tried to take him out. Uh, okay, I ha handily beat that. Okay, good. Uh, Dorfidil. You're That's up. the guy to the south that just did all that damage, right? Yeah, this the guy one right, right here. Well, Dorfidil has a special present for him. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on. Hey, you poor internet, dude. I don't know why. It's just, I see, I'm getting everything. It just doesn't send. Chug. You want me to roll it for you? Level five moonbeam. Let's go. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I love moonbeam. Where's moonbeam? I don't see Under moonbeam. level two spells, cast it at here. level five. Level five, boom. Oh, remember, that's when he starts his turn or enters it. No, boom, boom, you just shoot a big beam. Yeah, it's going to do. This isn't the one that, uh, yeah, isn't this one that I when used you before? start your turn? Yeah, when a creature enters um, the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, that's when it takes the damage. Oh, it's rolls three minutes later. <laughs> whatever, pick whatever damage you want. Yeah, but... so I guess it's uh, I guess it's the. Well, what is this? Well, no, it says when the creature enters the spell's area for the first time or starts. Its yeah, it's... It's yeah, this not, is our... it's not basically the 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 intention is that it only takes it once per round, right? So. Yeah. So it, it we it's fine to take it right now. It's just when it starts its turn, it's not going to take it again. Yeah. Well, I mean. No, that's not how it's written. That's not what our bird law ruling says. Except for we did bird law rule it. Yeah. Oh yes. Because so this he'll is take one this, of those spells like, that can be like exploited by hitting them multiple times and stuff. Yeah. Uh, we will say that he will take the damage when he starts his next turn. All right. Uh, I mean, assuming he's even still there, because like Ass he can, he has lots of teleport tricks and stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah, we need That's... to mark where the moonbeam is, because I don't. Yep. Where Where should we move? Where should we move? Moonbeam? Where should we put that? Uh, how about it... this silent image? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like oh gosh. <laughs> My bad. It's doing it again. I need a token. How about this Vrock, huh? This yeah. Vrock will be Turn him upside down. Beam. Yeah. Yeah, of course. We don't know what that is. It's five foot radius. Uh, and I'm going down there. Radius. What's the radius? Five feet? Yeah, five feet. It's just like a single okay. square, right? Oh, okay, it's that. I guess you guys can see that, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Will Tootsie be taking this damage if she is also in this square? 
I believe so. I, I guess so. All right. Dorfadil, do you do anything else? Uh, yeah, it's Dorfadil's turn. Okay. Jacob Kane, you're up. All right. But I would like to remind you this proximity of this little fucker oh, screeching yeah. in your ear. Oh, I'm aware. Okay. Jacob Kane being uh, loudly, hearing the loud, annoying scream, he's like, would you shut the hell up, dude? And he walks over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. At which point, he he makes another stab with perfection. Okay, that certainly hits. For, uh, for 16 magical slashing, and then uh, he's going to punch him, dude. All right. Uh, that also hits. Oh, hell yeah. For nine, and then All right. He'll... This oh. guy's looking very bad. He oh, drops to a knee. All he right. Grins his fangs at you. Then uh, Jacob Kane spins a key point to do flurry of blows and punches twice. First punch. For another nine. Hmm. You Second. hit him right on the chin. Second go punch. ahead, go ahead, roll out again. For another seven. All right, using your fists to slay the beast instead of your uh, sword, the Hulk collapses right in front of you. Uh, Ventric, I imagine you look pretty impressed, but also like, why wouldn't you just use your sword? <laughs> no, uh, Ventric's worried about dying as an old man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jacob, what's next? Now the seer. <laughs> Jacob. Yeah, Jacob will, uh, trying to decide which one he thinks he's going to switch with. I don't know. He'll run over and help out Dorfadil. Just in case. And that's Jacob's turn. All right. This guy, well, wow, he's, uh, that, we got one dead. This guy, Hunter's marked next to our good friend, uh, our good friend Horus. Um, let's see, Horus, do you still have shield up? Uh, no, I don't think I have shield up. Okay, I have, I'm wearing a shield. Like, I yes, have and he's hasted. Yeah, oh, I am hasted. hasted. That's okay. Um, let's see, this guy, he uh. He's going to slam you. He's going to try. One slam. Oof. Oof. For a 29, which certainly hits. And the second slam for a 15, which I assume just misses. Yeah, 15 does not hit. All right. I clicked on the damage, but I might be having the same problem that Data's having. Let's see. I'm going to click oh, that. There we go. Okay. So only 20 damage. All right. Okay. Not so bad for a crit. No. Uh, but this guy will proc an opportunity attack uh, as he comes over here and climbs up to get away from you. All right, I will swing my war hammer. Oh shit. Which oh, unfortunately no. misses. All right. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he hops up here, I guess. Uh, right in front of you, uh, Bedrick. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> 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 I, uh, you're, uh... Oh, Vendrick just straightens his back. He's like, okay, <laughs> we're doing this, huh? We're doing it again, huh? All right. Well, obviously, I don't want to see you go down. Uh... Okay, I'm going to move... 15 feet. You're going to see Aya crawl on top of the table behind you. As I'm just going to touch your back, and you're going to get uh, Cure Wounds at level 5. Ooh. As, let me actually cast the spell. It's going to deal 17 plus 15, so that's uh, 32. Alright. Much appreciated. As... I'm gonna back up 30 feet and get away from that fuck. 
as my bonus action is going to be spiritual weapon. I'm tired of casting spells or tired of wasting my action. <laughs> I want to do something else and I can't keep and keep getting disrupted. As spiritual weapon is going to whack this boy. It does hit. For 12. Okay. Roger. He's grinning that, again. That ends me. All right, Dragul. What are we doing All right, here? Dragul is going to slice at the, the gruel in front of him. Okay. Uh, that does hit. 21. Mm-hmm. For eight damage. All right. Yeah. He didn't like that. All right. And then once more. Yeah, it, yeah, it hits him again. Oof. Uh, 11 damage. Mm -hmm. He is slain right in front of you. Oh, dies I, in the bookcase. I forgot. As, as soon as the turn started, the moonbeam sears Tootsie mostly to death. Oh, God. She's like, ah, oh. Friendly fire, how, bro. <laughs> how much damage was that? 29? Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> like, how much was that shit? Uh, it was 29. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I taste like burning. <laughs> <laughs> I taste God. like burning. Just Alan. Uh, uh, Dragul is going to climb back up the wall. Uh, no, he's not. That's not very smart. He'll climb to here. Okay. He's used. Hold on. How much movement does he have? He'll move to here going around the horrible searing moonbeam. Okay. Tootsie, attack! All right, and Tootsie Shao. It's only a twelve. Yeah, that does miss. Oh man, <laughs> that's that's Dragul's turn. All right, the Oracle shouts out to you in your head. Don't worry, it's a good thing that that missed. And uh, it goes over to this Gru over here. I believe he's the last one. He's going to uh, disengage, take the disengage action. Uh, oops, sorry. I'm clicking shit. He's going to move right there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, he can, he can move there, no problem. Uh, you, you know what he's going to do? He's going to stand right there and end his turn and just keep screaming. Uh, ooh, you're up. Ooh. Ooh. I, I, I was hitting my button and it wasn't taking. Mm. Ah. What's that? Mm hmm. Thought? Uh, I'll try doing cat sending uh, this at the um, seer. Uh, okay. The negative energy flood. He needs to make a uh, Constitution save. All right. Nice. Let's uh, let's see, con save. So uh, that's gibberish line. A gibberish line. Is it yeah, he that's what Drago had. Makes an 18. Yeah. So he passes. Okay. Uh, he just takes half that much. Okay. Uh, Bird Law, is this the uh, kind of, is, would this proc the uh, Ben space since he got, a t got hit with an attack? Ooh. Or were we saying that that doesn't affect spell attacks? It probably doesn't 
like spell attacks, yeah? I mean, it I might be a spell. A saver. Does it count as an attack or a spell? A That's the thing. Yeah, it looks oh, like well, it's a saver. Yeah, this isn't a spell. Yeah, this isn't a spell. Okay, this isn't then a, fine. He takes... It's not a spell attack. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay, so he takes half that damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he takes 11. Roger. Negative damage, and then Ul's gonna... Uh, you know, yeah, I would argue any... if it said takes damage instead of that, then I would. Well, I always thought spell attack is anything you had to roll for. It is. That is also what it is. Well, yeah, like anything I meant you make an attack roll. Mm -hmm. Right, so like Ray of Frost would be a spell attack, but negative energy flood is it because it's a save or fail. Yeah. I yeah, I say I think I agree with that. Um but as for Ul's turn, that's it. Ul can go and maybe put the seer in his lamp, but then he has to go in his lamp. Um but yeah, that's it. That's all he can do. Pass. All right. Vendrick, you're face to face Vendrick. with another Hulk. All right, <laughs> he's gonna uh, turn real quick at this guy. All right, bonus action, telekinetic pull. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Let's see, he's not very strong. Let's make sure. Well, Rank six. Yeah. yeah. What? Pulls him Pulled right him. into you. His blade uh, burns awesome. bright with a green fire. Eighteen. 18 hits. All right. Dealing. Good roll. Boom. The blade comes Eleven. down and slashes this poor Gru. <laughs> Slices that Gru and then attacks the Hulk. Okay. Uh, you attack the oh, Hulk. Is the Gru alive still? Gru is still alive, yes. Okay. Well, then if that's going at the Gru instead. Okay. <laughs> then, yeah, that hits him. All right. For eight. All right. All right, that's enough. That slashes this Gru to pieces. Telekinetically pulled in and then slashed twice. <laughs> Turn Fuck back yeah, to the dude. Hulk. Turns back right. to the Hulk. All right. Now it's us. <laughs> <laughs> he, he growls at you. But what Horus the it? Redeemer. You have no right. enemies around you. Well, shucks. I'm going to look up there. I'm tempted to, uh, I could miss the step up there, but I kind of feel like it's funnier if I try to run up the stairs <laughs> and I feel like you guys got it. So I'm going to, you have I'm gonna, three dashes. You can basically, do. I can three, I can do three dashes and I can move 40 feet, right? Yeah. Cause I'm double. So that's so 40 gonna, times three. So that's 40 right there. And then I'll dash and I'll get to here. And then that's one dash, and then I'll do a, a third dash. Look at how close I got. <gasps> Where's the, the light-footed yeah, and super then, heavy armor? And I forgot my rhino last time, but I'm going to bring her up this time. She's going to dash as well. She's coming up. Well done. Uh, but that's my turn. All right. All right. Well... Uh, let's see. Uh, this guy, boom, hit by, uh, he starts his turn within the, the moonbeam. So that's pretty horrid. He takes 29 damage. Let me pull this to the side. Mark that down. All right. He takes 29. He, um, ooh. What is he going to do? Uh, he is going to roll his recharge, which he doesn't. Uh, he's going to take a step over here uh, while hitting you, Dragul, with his comet staff. All actually, right. actually, it's sorry, I apologize. What he's going to do is actually uh, use out of phase movement to phase through Tootsie and then you. 
Okay. Oof. All right. Taking one d ten for each of you. Uh, so and he's gonna move. Which one's which? Uh, let me just roll it. One d ten for Tootsie. And then five for Dragul. Yeah, he um moves through Tootsie, and she says, "Ah!" And her eyes go blank, and she lays down, smoldering in the moonbeam, and is Ooh. burned to ashes. Ooh. They put it, Tootsie dudes. Uh, and okay, so Dragul takes five. I, I imagine Dragul gets an op. No, it doesn't provoke an opportunity provoke attacks. Anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, he just moves over here and he aims a, uh, a psychic orb at uh, Dwarfadil. And then uh, aims another one at Jacob Kane. So the 25 psychic goes to Dwarfadil. Oh, well, thankfully, uh, the, does it the 20 misses just barely. Wow, just nice. Just scraping by. <laughs> All right, Dwarfadil, what you got? All right, one second. Let's see if I can roll. Hey. Nope, I can't. Roll a con save. Put the roll con save for me. Brad, are you there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. Pass, isn't it? Uh, uh, I guess uh, 25 damage? No, no because it's be half 12 of 25. It be. It's Samurai yeah. Jacob Paladin? I am, but I don't have oh, an aura there yet. There you go. I don't have an aura yet. Ah, oh, damn. You're the worst paladin. <laughs> I am part, I'm part monk, so... He's half monk, dude. Sort of. Fucking... He's half monk. He's from, he's from the past when paladin auras didn't exist. Yeah. We don't even and know what the hell a that Hulk, is. Dude, show some respect. Yeah, I look you, over. Everybody keeps yelling aura, and he doesn't know what that means. <laughs> I look over and I say, you need to do a better job, man. <laughs> you need to do a <laughs> much better up. job, man. I'll try, bro. <laughs> I assume Moonbeam disappears. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, uh, it sucks because right. your roll actually made it. Oh, right, God damn it. Whatever. That's okay. What do you do, Dwarfadil? You're in the uh, thick of it. Hold on, I'm trying to find it. All right, Dwarfadil's angry at this point. Uh, not, not a lot makes him angry. Yeah. He's really angry at the lack of uh, auras. And teamwork. <laughs> and teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> and like, when he lived on the wait, 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 man. He's he's upset at the lack of teamwork when, as I recall, he left fucking Dragul by the goddamn chimera. <laughs> he let him to die, dude. <laughs> and he just burned he just burned poor Tootsie to death. Yeah. Incinerated yeah. Tootsie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's very selfish. He's like, back on the commune, we all helped each other. It was just well, natural everybody helped that he me. died like that. He's just, he's just trying to like, crew like an army of undead protesters. Urfidel's gonna get a nice little wall of fire going here. Actually, a little... Hold on. I'll, I'll change that. He's gonna get a... Much bigger wall of fire going here. Can you all see that? Yeah. I can see that. Okay. So you just yeah. do a circle around him? Yeah, it's going to wall of fire. Them? Yeah. Can, can somebody roll a wall of fire? How does that work? Does he... Yeah, no, does he get to roll to be on the wrong side of the wall of fire? He could make what? it a circle and point it inward. Yeah, I yeah, could. Yeah. But I think they get a roll. 
to be no, I don't. on the other side of it. Nope. Uh, the when the wall for the appears, damage. each creature within its area must make a dex saving throw on a failed save, it takes damage. Uh, One side of the wall is selected by you. Damage. Yeah, no, they don't get a save to move to either side of it. Yeah. Okay. It's such a good I know spell. It, it worked like that in 3.5, I think. Because when I played Pathfinder, if you succeeded, you would end up on the not bad side. Oh, the good side. Yeah. I, th right. I think I think some of the solid walls, like, you get that option, but this isn't a solid wall, so. <laughs> okay. It's a wall of fire. So, uh, deck saves, right? Yep. All right. Hulk makes his deck save. Oh, finally, no witnesses. Uh, 15, so he fails it. And then the Seer also makes their deck save for 21. So he passes, I think. Uh, and he takes does half. 25 damage to the Hulk. Roger that. Uh, DM. Yes? What, uh, uh, what happens to all the old paper that's in the Wall of Fire? Oh, fuck. There is a huge inferno going right here. <laughs> uh, we are in a library, and it is on fire. Uh, yeah, I mean, things are going up. You hear the Oracle in the back? She's like, I fucking knew he'd do that. Uh, and... Yeah, it's Jacob Kane's turn now, unless Dorfidel wants to move. Nope. Nope. Dorfidel's just not moving from the spot. All right. He's still looking. He's still looking for that book. He doesn't know why he can't find why beer has bubbles, the book. Okay. You're doing that in the Inferno? Uh, Jacob Kane, what are you uh, up to? Do I get like a sense that the whole place could go up at any moment, dude? I feel like that's the case. It is a library made, you know, it's basically stories and stories of paper. All right. Well, Jacob will step over here and he'll go ahead and use his action to lay on hands the full 20 hit points back to himself. <laughs> All right. And he'll watch to see if he's needed i guess he'll he'll put he'll put perfection away and he'll be thinking should i should i pull out this longbow i got from that dead woodsman and that ends the turn <laughs> okay all right this guy uh let's see what does he do Let's see. He's going to look over at Vendrick right here, and he is going to slam you. Ooh. Is he going to do that against you? I think. Can he see him? I, I'm. I would say that if. I would say that if uh, people can attack into this fire, they, you know, it could be attacked out as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if he's going to do that. Let's see. Uh, he's... I like that this old man is scary. <laughs> this old man is scary. Uh, let's see. What does he do? Okay. He's going to move. And yes, he's going to take an opportunity attack from you, Vendrick. So go ahead and roll that. All right going to uh, that definitely hits all right for 11 all right uh he takes that let me just mark that down. slice I think right in his back as he moves away oh uh -huh. he growls um dwarfidil you are the subject of a multi-attack and a fist reaches out of this wall of fire to bonk you which he uh, only gets a 10. Uh, yeah. But the second one also makes an attack at you for 15. Uh, yep, that hits. All right, for 18 bludgeoning. All right. 
Uh, Brad, can you try not to fuck me with your next roll? <laughs> I would like this wall of fire to stay there. Your constitution? Uh, yes, I believe. It'll be 10. 15. Okay, he passes. No problem there. And then he takes his fire damage again. And how much is that? Uh, it, it, he can roll the deck save again. Is that every time he moves or if he ends his turn in it's there? It's ending his turn in it. So he, yeah. so since he's in it, he can freely move around it. And basically that entire area is fire because okay. it's 10 feet. All right. Well, he certainly doesn't want to end his turn inside of, uh, some, some flames. So he, he just gets in front. But that does end his turn right there. Uh, Aya. Okay. We're up. All right. We just saw the monkey go through the flame. And we know the other fucker is in there. Uh. So have we determined because we can attack through it, we can see through it? That's true. You okay. Can... Bonus action, I'm moving the spectral weapon, and it's just going to attack the seer. Okay. Okay. It That's does. a miss, unfortunately. That's a miss. That's okay. It's it's a magical spectral axe. As... I'm going to take the form. I'm going to cast a spell. I cast a spell. All right. As we know the but as far as we're aware, the butterfly guy is coming back. We don't know how that's going to be a problem, but it's, I feel like it's going to be a problem. She has to escape, whether it's going through the lamp or going out the door. Two is better than one. I'm casting seeming. I'm taking on the form of the Oracle. Okay. Sounds good. You look like the Oracle. Yes. Uh, what do you What do you do with that? Well, you can't just think about it. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for right here for right now. That's what I'm gonna do. You can still see, kind of see everything from right there. Yeah. We'll go right there for right now. All right. And. All right, Dragul is going to st stare at Dwarfadil very unhappily and then charge into the wall of fire. Please roll the damage. Now it's 10. What? Uh, it's 5d6. You only roll it the one time, though, when you do wall of yeah. fire. Yeah. So it's it's ten and half if you make a deck save. It's ten. Oh, okay, and so half? it's ten. I thought it was twenty-five. Yeah, I thought it was twenty-five. Yeah, it's twenty-five. Oh. Half if you so make a deck save. So half of it would be twelve. It was because your right. your thing was glitching out. Remember? Oh, oh like, that's got to be what it was. Well, either way, I'll make the deck save. And you take twenty-five. It's I don't make it. Actually, well, I don't know that you make the deck save Dracul's when you enter. Bronze... You do. You What's make that? it uh, every time. Anytime the damage can okay. be applied, you make it. Because it's basically yeah. if you end your turn or start your turn, or if you move through it. But it only happens so once the per fire turn, doesn't so. seem to burn through Jagul's bronze scales as much. He doesn't seem as affected by it. Okay. And uh, takes 12. Because he has fire resistance. Yeah. But yeah, he's going to run in and take a swing at this guy. All right. Unreliable greatness is activated. Does he still have favored foe on this guy? I, I don't because know. Because he... I... 
I, I think if it was, I would have put a mark on it. It's just kind of weird because he flip he flip flopped it. He just yeah. Like, yeah. It, he he would still it's have just kind of weird because he him. had favored foe on him and then flip flopped. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll do a Constitution because I just took damage. Okay. Yeah, because all um, he did was teleport. Favored foe would still be on the same. Yeah, because it's not like yeah, yeah, yeah. Favored foe is on. Mm -hmm. All right, so he takes, it looks like, 14 damage? Yes. All right. Then he'll attack him again. Um. Hey, you've got it every time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yep, yeah. I think he missed, he missed it once. Against a goon. Um, you hit again. 18 damage. All right. All right. All right. There's no gruels alive. And then... As a bonus action... Um... Yeah, fuck it. Uh, 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 We're running low on time. All right. Uh, as a bonus action, he'll cast. Uh, no, no, he won't. It, he'll he'll just stay there. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um. Can't see into the wall of fire, can we? You can see into it. Yeah. You can? Yep. Yeah, we can. Alright. There's only two left. Alright. So I just start blasting. Alright. Um, you hit this first guy? Uh, 18, 29, 33 total damage? Yep. All right. And he's gonna get knocked back. Oh. Oh, you're gonna was... knock him... How, I, how much I, do you I, knock him back? It's, uh, feet, it? no, it's, uh, 25 altogether. And I can't choose not to do it either. That's the worst part. Okay, <laughs> you <laughs> knock him right out of the fire. Oh, my God. I, I have no other choice. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, 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 uh, the wall of fire. I it's looks yeah. confused and also on oh, fire. God. Oh, I okay. can do nothing else. <laughs> Ventric, you're up, my dude. All right. Hmm. Ventric's in a bit of pickle, ain't he? He is. I don't really want to go in that fire. It beckons you. But I also <laughs> don't want to leave Dwarf and Dylan them in danger. Oh, God. I don't know. Can you Misty step? I don't have... I can't teleport. That's not my thing. Don't you have, like, sleep or something? I do have sleep, but I don't want to do that. Fuck, I might have to go through this fire, guys, aren't I? 20, 30. How heroic are you feeling? I can... I'll just, as, I, as I see you about to do it, I'm just going to drop concentrate. <laughs> I can just if drop he... concentration on it at any point. Look at that. God. It's got to be on your turn, dude. No, no, no. You can drop What about all the whatever. paper that's on fire? <laughs> well, see, that's that's another thing. I've, I like to think Dwarvadil goes, don't worry, I'll get rid of it. And then the fire, like, only slightly goes down. <laughs> well, yeah, but then it starts spreading because it's not contained. 
because it's yeah. It actually is um, There's a backdraft. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's uh, like firefighters have to deal the, uh, with The Oracle a opens a window and uh whoosh. <laughs> Gotta get oh, a nice backdraft okay. going. <laughs> I know what Vendrick's gonna do. Um if if the wall of fire is still there. According um, to He is going written, to cast You can end concentration at any time, no action required, it does say. Yeah, but is it on your turn or no? I don't no, think it has to be. I don't think it. I think you can do I'm it sure there whenever. is a ruling. Okay, I'll allow it. Go ahead. Fire, okay. fire, surprisingly down, suddenly. But, but still, but some, still fire. some fire. Yeah. <laughs> we have to specify that. I'll say, there is no fire. I'll say the fire the there. Fire. You're not going to take 25 damage. But I'll say Ooh. it's uh. Can, can Vendrick? Uh, because I do have the bonus action, I can cast a cantrip. And Vendrick, would you allow me to use Control Flames to sort of get me a path? 100%. All right. I'm going to spend one of my attacks to, like, woof, buffer the flames as I charge through. Okay. Um, and then swing my sword at the uh, at the hull. Okay. That hits. 13, 13. slashing. Yeah. All right. I, he's oh. like runs through leaps as he pushes the flames down with his free hand. Extremely cool. This oh. guy, uh, he looks at you and he starts grinning again. Our dance isn't through, man, uh, big fella. Horus, are you also running through fire? Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna run. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run towards the fire, and right as I get to like where the fire is, I'm going to cast Misty Step. But I'm gonna <laughs> try and make it look like I ran through the fire, so that okay. I get like points for being brave. And I'm gonna Misty Step to like right here and be like, "Oh, ow! It's so hot!" And then I'm gonna run up. And, I, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna try and, and and thwack this guy. All right, give him his thwack. Uh, which is not a disadvantage. I don't. Okay, think. twenty. Yeah, regardless, you hit him. All right, hell yeah. Uh oh, what do you guys think? Should I should I pop the smite? I don't want to blow. We might have to fight another nah. fight today. I'm gonna just hit. Yeah, him. I think just keep hitting him. Yeah. Uh, for 15. Okay. Uh, and then I I get two more because I I get my extra attack and I get my hasty attack. Yes. So I'm just going to roll them both here. I got a 13 and a 19. All right. Let me add this stuff up. Oh, well, that's, that's easy the, to do. That's a 20. Well, that's the, those are my attack. Oh, uh, 13 misses, 19 hits. All right. So, 17. 17? Okay. All right. He's up. But All right. He, he's, he's up. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, I'm so brave for running through that fire. It's so hot. You are brave. And this guy turns and he looks at you. He's like, yes, so brave. And this guy right here uh, blasts a psychic orb at uh, his his buddy here. His friend? Yeah. At his friend. I figured this was going to happen. And because of psychic mirror, <laughs> it reflects the damage to everybody around him. So everyone oh, around him takes God. 31 damage. Ooh. Uh, you know what I would like to do? Tell me. I would like to use my panel divinity. Maybe. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, after an attacker, does this does this count as an attack against the creature? Do they have to it's, attack uh, you? It is an attack. Against, it is an attack. Against him. Yeah, it's yeah. against him. All right. Yeah, I guess you could trigger it on himself. He's the one getting attacked. Yeah, so who did the attack? 
Whoever this did guy, this, this guy to the you, south yeah. does the other attack. Than, other than me, and he didn't. <laughs> he did the attack on this guy. So yeah. I am going to deal thirty-one radiant damage to him. Although he does get a save. Okay. A wisdom save. A wisdom save on a failed save. Okay. Uh, what's the uh? What's? Yeah. What's the DC? The... Oh, I guess it's it's my uh, it's my DC. Your charisma. My, it's seventeen. Oh, just okay, well, he snatches it. Takes but he half. takes half damage, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. still takes so, half. Damage. Okay, he still takes fifteen. He's like a little pissed off about that, but uh, oof, oof, he's he's getting he's getting down there. Uh, but and we all I, take I mean, thirty-one. You do all take 31. Ow. Uh, and this guy, oh, man. He's highly intelligent. He's, he's going to do it. He's going to psychic orb this guy again. Oh, God. Oh, no. For 30. God. Oh, God. Ooh. Vendrick's about to go down. But that's it. Horus is about to go down. That's, uh, that's his turn. Dwarfadil. Pretty sure. Damn, how much HP does Dwarfadil have? A lot. He's uh, a hill dwarf, so he's yeah. tanky as heck. Oh, yeah. Did you drop a mask to your wounds? Sorry, my friend. Because uh, I dropped concentration on the haste. I didn't pass oh. it. Of course, it's lethargy right. for a round. Yeah. Oh no! Probably mark it because it'll probably be next week. Hey, did, didn't you have to? Didn't you have to meet fourteen? No, because it's half. I passed the first one. You're right next to the I do have a. I do have a. Uh, I do have a uh, uh, aura of protection. Oh. Oh yeah. Uh, there you go. That adds four. Makes it eighteen. So nine plus five plus four. Unfortunately, an eighteen. I think still doesn't pass it because it would have been thirty-six. I have to oh, be to 19. Oh, man. Oh, so close. Uh, it was uh, a Brad, I think Dwarfadil cast Mass Cure Wounds, if you would click oh. that from his... Mass Cure Wounds. Gracias, well, sir. Wouldn't you have to roll it twice? Because the first one was, would have been the DC 15. The second one would have been a DC... Um... I did. I rolled it twice. I got okay. it. Okay. Oh, you didn't uh, with the Mass Cure Wounds. Is Jake in that? Uh, okay. I didn't see the first one. It's six people within a thirty, within a sixty foot radius, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's okay. a huge, huge So I think well, we're all in there. Foot, it's thirty foot radius foot. from wherever the point is being cast from. So yeah. So if he yeah, casts it here, right he can hit pretty much anybody. Yeah. Yay. Cool. All right. So we all get. Right. We all get nineteen. Oh man, I don't need it. Well, that's just cast it at a normal. Did he cast it higher? Nope, just normal. Okay. All right, you guys get the heal. Jacob Kane, your friends are seemingly in trouble. Kane the Seer. I'm on it, dude. And uh, leaping over these uh, bookshelves or whatever this is, tables. I got these desks. Mm -hmm. Runs over to them. And uh, he's not actually using the Val of Enmity, but he's, he's just saying... Uh, and you will know my name is Samurai Jake when I lay my vengeance upon thee. And he strikes with perfection. Hell yeah. And of course, oh, it's a fucking... <laughs> it's a criminal so, He turns around like, what the fuck? And Jake like falls <laughs> off the fucking desk. <laughs> God. Wait a minute, hold on. I do actually have enough movement to stand up if I just claim I fell prone. Is... So I do that. And I just I just start punching. <laughs> That's a hit. Of D &D. Oh, and if I am you gonna... say any cool shit before you roll. It's doomed to fail. <laughs> and I uh, I'm gonna spend a key point to make it a stunning strike. Okay. So oh, hopefully he's, his con's not too good. Oh god. Uh, 14. Failed, I guess he's stunned, dude. 
All right, he takes that damage. So then I will. Uh, you, you hit him again. Yeah, bonus action, punch him with advantage. All right. That hits. For another nine. Nine. And he'll be stunned until the end of my next turn. So. Damn, son. All right. Unless he's Put, got something uh, up his sleeve, and that's Jacob Kane. All right, sounds good. Uh, let's see. It's uh the beast's turn, and he uh, let's see what he does. He gives one. He gives uh. Let's see. I'm gonna roll. One d three. All right. He he attacks our friend Dwarfadil one time with a slam. For sixteen. Nope. Oh. And he attacks uh, Vendrick. Misses. With a 15. Okay, so with a miss. And uh, yeah, that's his turn. I. Uh, these guys are so close to being dead. I, I hope we can just finish it. It'll only take a couple of minutes. These guys are looking real worse for the wear. Okay. I, I counted it out already because I already know what I'm going to cast. All right. At fourth level, I'm. My hair doesn't change because I look like the Oracle. It's quite shocking, right? As mm -hmm. I'm, ta I'm targeting the Seer, specifically with Blight. Okay. Come. Holy, and it's a constitution spell. All right, let's see. It's pretty Sounds good. Like half damage, damn. kind of spell. Would yeah, 21 no kill him outright? I'm just curious. Would half damage kill him outright? Uh, I... No. Okay. It wouldn't. But that kills okay, him. Right. Right. <laughs> Boom! Hell he yeah. just necrotically withers and shrivels and he just he just turns into like a nasty tentacly puddle on the ground. And then as a bonus action, the uh the the spiritual the spectral weapon spiritual weapon is gonna move and he gets an attack as it's gonna attack the other guy. Make that attack. Let's go. Come on, bitch. Where the fuck is it? I have like 300,000 macros. <laughs> there it is. Unfortunately, oh, that Randy. does miss. What but, uh, Dragul. He's stunned? He's stunned? At attack rolls no, against this no, creature have advantage. Was, the other guy was the one that was the other yeah, guy. Was oh. was the other guy. Oh, okay. Damn. R.I.P. Anyways. Uh, Dragul, he's gonna cast Hunter's Mark on this guy just to make it absolutely certain. It's on there. He's gonna run up. Yeah. Uh, you have the feeling of greatness. <laughs> you have greatness in your weapon. Yeah. You hit. All right. For you 17. bring him down to one knee. <laughs> All right. Uh, not that time. You still hit. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, it's just 18. You still um, hit. Um, yep, he stabs him right in the eye. His white eyes go dark and gray, and he collapses to the ground. Yeah. You All guys right. have won the battle. <laughs> And on that note, I've got a scram. See you, man. Yeah. Sorry it took so long. That good was a good fight. I'm also tired. <laughs> Hell of a battle. That was good. <laughs> I'm glad. GG, yeah. fellas. All right. GG, fam. GG. Be, well. Be well. Dude, that was so great. That was a good, was a good fight. Blood. That was so fucking good. <laughs> that was, that was good such a good battle. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. I love all the little synergies that the different types of monsters have with each other yeah i was like this makes it more interesting than just like that was hard as fuck that was awesome punch. I'm yeah. Back. yeah all right guys see you red i'm gonna go to yeah. bed i'm gonna <laughs> later the same oh that's awesome as fuck i'm glad you and on that note, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more fiendish freak fights from the Adventurer's Landing.